tired of the same old, same old spiritual YouTube channels? Subscribe to my channel today and make sure that notification is set to on so that you can stay up to date with all my videos and content. Hi guys, thanks for watching. I recently did a video on the Zimbabwe UFO sighting. If you have not checked out that video, please do so right now. When I did that video, I was called to do it. I was, um, my intuition spoke to me and I did it. I had no idea that only a little short time later, probably about a week or two later, there would be a congressional hearing on UFOs. So it was a huge confirmation for me to see that Congress and the Department of Defense for the United States held its first hearing about UFOs or what's commonly uh, referred to as UAPs. Um, I believe that's unidentified aerial phenomenon as opposed to unidentified flying object. Um, so they've, they've changed their terminology a bit uh, regarding what all this stuff is. So it's a it's kind of big. I have not watched the entire um, UFO congressional hearing. I went to find a video out there that was an extremely short version because I think the hearing itself is maybe two hours, ninety minutes to two hours. I'm not really sure, and we just nobody's going to sit through that on my YouTube channel. So I found uh, an abbreviated version of that. And then I have a second video I want you guys to look at right after that. So let me play for you now the uh, congressional hearing regarding UFO sightings held by uh, the Department of Defense of the United States. So here we go. It's a privilege to be here with you today to address your questions regarding Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAP. What are UAP? Put simply, UAP are airborne objects that, when encountered, cannot be immediately identified. However, it is the Department's contention that by combining appropriately structured, collected data with rigorous scientific analysis, any object that we encounter can likely be isolated characterized, identified, and if necessary, mitigated. With regard to the importance of transparency, the Department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people. However, we are also mindful of our obligation to protect sensitive sources and methods. Our goal is to strike that delicate balance, one that enables us to maintain the public's trust while preserving those capabilities that are vital to support of our service personnel. In closing, the Department is committed to this effort and welcomes the challenge. We thank you for your committed support and look forward to your questions. Let me share with you the first video that we have here today, which shows an observation in real time. There it was. That's, in many cases, that's all that a report may include. And in many other cases, we have far less than this. As we detailed in both the unclassified and classified versions of the preliminary assessment released by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence last June, this often limited amount of high quality data uh, and reporting hampers our ability to draw firm conclusions about the nature or intent of UAP. As detailed in the ODNI report, if and when individual UAP incidents are resolved, they likely fall into one of five potential explanatory categories. Airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomena, U.S. government or U.S. industry developmental programs, foreign adversary systems, or a other bin that allows for a holding bin of difficult cases and for the possibility of surprise and potential scientific discovery. Let me show you a couple of, uh, another video and image uh, taken years apart in different areas. In this video, U.S. Navy personnel recorded what appears to be triangles, some flashing, recorded several years ago off the coast of the United States. This was recorded while the U.S. Navy ship uh, observed a number of small unmanned aerial systems uh, in the area. And importantly, the video was taken through night vision goggles with a single lens reflex camera. 
These remained unresolved for several years. Of those 144, 18 of them uh, reportedly appear to exhibit unusual flight characteristics, appear to demonstrate advanced technology, uh, and some of them appeared to remain stationary in winds aloft, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. Um, that's pretty intriguing. Uh, uh, and, and if you're able to answer this uh, in this setting, are we aware of any uh, foreign adversary capable of moving objects uh, without any discernible means of propulsion? Um, I think I would, uh, without discernible means of propulsion, I would say that uh, we're not aware of any adversary that can move an object without discernible means of propulsion. Uh, the question then becomes, in many of these cases where we don't have a discernible mean of propulsion in the data that we have, um, in some cases uh, um, there is likely sensor artifacts uh, that, uh, that, that may be hiding some of that. Uh, there's certainly some degree of, uh, of something that looks like signature management that we have seen from some of these uh, uh, UAP. Uh, but I would, I would caution, I would simply say that there are a number of, uh, of events in which we do not have an explanation, in which the, and there are a small handful in which there are flight characteristics or signature management um, that we can't explain with the data that we have. Um, we'll continue, those are obviously the ones that are of most interest to us. Uh, earlier when we asked about how you uh, avoid technological surprise, the biggest way you avoid technological surprise is by collecting this type of data and by importantly um, calibrating the assumptions that you go into with how you do that analysis. I'll tell you, within the UAP task force, we have uh, one basic assumption, and that is that generally speaking, generally speaking, our sensors operate as designed. Um, and we make that assumption because many times these are multi-sensor uh, collections. We make no assumptions about uh, the origin of this uh, or that there may or may not be some sort of technology that we don't understand. That's, I think, the key to avoiding technological surprises by calibrating those assumptions. It's also been reported uh, that there have been UAP observed uh, and interacting with and flying over sensitive military facilities, particularly, and not just ranges, but uh, some facilities housing our strategic nuclear forces. Uh, one such incident allegedly occurred uh, uh, at Malmstrom Air Force Base, in which 10 of our nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable at the same time. A glowing red orb was observed overhead. I'm not commenting on the accuracy of this. I'm simply asking you whether you're aware of it and whether you have any comment on the accuracy of that report. Let me pass that to Mr. Bray. You've been looking at UAPs over the last uh, three years. Uh, that data is not uh, within the holdings of the UAP task force. Okay. But are you aware of the, the report or that the data exists somewhere? I have uh, I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data on that. So you've just seen informal stories, no official assessment that you've done or exists within DOD that you're aware of uh, regarding the Malmstrom incident? Uh, all I can speak to is, you know, what's within my cognizance of the UAP task force, and we have not looked at that incident. Well, I would say, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on this, but that's out there in, in the ether. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, if, who else is doing it? If something was officially brought to our attention, we would look at it. Uh, there are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your attention? I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure, so, <laughs> this is pretty official. Sure. So we'll go back and take a look at it, but generally there is some um, authoritative figure that says there is an incident that occurred. We'd like you to look at this. Uh, but in terms of just tracking what may be in the media that says that something occurred at this time, at this place, um, there are probably a, a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resources to do that right now. Well, I don't claim to be an authoritative figure, but for what it's worth, I would like you to look in, into it. And sure. If for another reason you could dismiss it and say this is not worth wasting resources on. We'll do. Um, and have we attempted to communicate with those objects? Uh, no. So we don't, we don't even put out a s alert saying, you know, uh, U.S., um, Identi you know, identify yourself, uh, you are, you know, within our flight path or something like that. We, we haven't said anything like that? We've not put anything out like that. Generally speaking, uh, what, uh, you know, for example, in the video that we showed earlier, 
uh, it appears to be something that is uh, you know, unmanned, uh, appears to be something that uh, may or may not be in controlled flight, uh, and so we've not attempted any communication uh, with that. Okay, so, um, and I, I assume we've never discharged any armaments against a UAP, correct? That's correct. Um, how about wreckage? Ha have we come across any wreckage of any kind of um, object that has now been examined by you? The UAP task force doesn't have any wreckage that isn't uh, explainable, that, that isn't consistent with being of terrestrial origin. Do we have any sensors underwater uh, to um, detect on submerged UAPs? Uh, anything that is in the ocean or in the seas. So I think uh, that would be more appropriately addressed in closed session, sir. Okay. Basically, it sounds like we have a good partnership with FAA, um, but apart from FAA, we don't have partnerships with other agencies or other entities that might be tracking so that we could enlarge our data set to make comparisons. But we will. So that's the goal of this next effort will be to uh, expand that relationship with the, uh, the, with the rest of government and the interagency. All right. Uh, with that, I want to thank you all for, for taking the time out. I also want to thank uh, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for participating in this very uh, historical and important um, hearing. I think it's one of the few times we can demonstrate some degree of bipartisanship around UAPs and UFOs, so I love it, appreciate it, thank you. And we will see you all, we will recess this hearing for the moment and return in a closed session at noon. So that was the uh, congressional hearing, summed up. Um, my takeaways is that I was not happy with the Department of Defense and the quote unquote UAP task force or whatever the hell it is. Uh, their, their answers. Um, again, UAP is sort of a new new terminology for what we used to refer to as UFO. Anytime there was something in the air that was not of terrestrial origin, we, we were nicknaming it or naming it informally UFO, which is an acronym for Unidentified Flying Object. Uh, apparently, the United States has now renamed them as uh, UAPs, which is an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Um, but if you watch that clip, you will notice that someone from um, um, in the congressional hearing was asking, what about underwater? Do we have anything? And it's a no. Well, the reason is, is because there was a huge news story about a UAP, something flying, basically interacting with something under the water, and military knew about this. And, like, okay, so there's there's nothing there. We, we weren't even doing that. And there was another great question about why, did, why hasn't there been anything in our agencies that sends a communication signal to some of these UAPs, like, hi, hi, we're from Earth. No, we don't do it. No, 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 because the answer we get is, well, they're unmanned. Well, how, really? You know that? You know that for a fact that it's unmanned? Or they appear to be unmanned, and maybe the, the size of the uh, craft, the UAP, is so small in comparison to what we're used to that they're coming up with that. It could be, it could be certainly um, remotely controlled, why the F aren't, which is obvious, if there's nothing in there that's an intelligent life inside the craft, then it has to be remotely controlled genius. Uh, so in that situation, you'd still send a uh, communication transmission to the UAP. We always send transmission communication to anything. Uh, it's always done. And you're wondering about the Depar Department of Defense. Uh, they have the resources. We have a lot of resources. Um, we have a budget. It's a huge budget for all this. They once said that all of this stuff was not being looked at anymore. They actually said, we're not looking at it. We don't have any. The Pentagon is not um, providing any funds for anyone, any human, to research this or to look at this at all. And it turns out that's not true. So, but, I mean, there's a lot of semantics that's going on. Kind of feel like it's almost a waste of time that UFO hearing, to be honest with you. Uh, 
you know, um, at least they, they're, here's the thing. There is sort of the security thing here. Um, other, other governments like China and Russia have stated that they are looking at this. So, I mean, I guess th there's a theory out there that a lot of governments around the world, not, not just the United States, do not want to admit that there's something in their airspace that they can't figure out. They don't know where it came from. They don't know what to do with it. And it leaves because then it sort of signifies maybe a weakness in their security defense. And that's not good. Obviously, nobody wants that. Um, and there's a lot of other things. I mean, then another theory is what about the technology? This could be a race for the technology. And if they can, we can get a, if a government could get a hold of the technology and reverse engineer it, then maybe we, maybe that particular um, government and country could be a powerhouse because they would have advanced technology that nobody else has. So there's a lot of these things that go on that I think is, is the reason why we don't hear about it. I really truly don't think that anyone, that the government bodies care about us, like frightening us. They don't care. What they do not want is somebody else getting the technology. No, no government agency around the world or any country wants that. They don't want somebody else to have a leg up. And that's really the motivation. They, they don't care about us going into a panic. I, I, that's not true. They don't care. What they do care about is being, um, if somebody, if another country gets a hold of something that's so technologically advanced that they can reverse engineer it and benefit from it and be a powerhouse, then they would be the, the lead the lead, the lead dog, basically. And so nobody wants that um, around the world. So we're here and we're, we're I mean, oh, this is this is a lot of bullshit that you listen to today. There's way more uh, uh, UFO sightings that, that they're admitting to. There's a lot more evidence out there. When he said, um, you know, about the, um, he showed the video that was really like very short and was very hard to discern what it was. That's BS. There's a lot. There's a lot better footage out there. So, I didn't like what I just saw, and I'm glad I didn't sit through the two hours or the 90 minutes uh, UFO hearing the Pentagon, whatever uh, that happened. I think it was only maybe six week, six days ago or a week ago that this hearing happened. I want to play one more video, and this is the um, this is a guy named Jeremy Corbell. He is a top. Uh, researcher and he just uh, he made a movie a couple years ago called Area 51 I think um, um, featuring Bob Lazar um, so this guy kind of he knows a lot about UFO and the history and all that and I wanted to play something short because uh, a news station interviewed him, him about this hearing so I want to play that for you right now so without further ado here is the special report um, interview done to, uh, with Jeremy Corbell regarding the UFO hearing um, with the United States Congress. All right, you heard the name Mr. Corbell there. You are name dropped. There he is. Let's bring in UFO documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. This is your specialty. You've been working on this for years now. Thank you for being with us today on such a big day. This is for you. And can we say the UFO community? Absolutely, the UFO community, yeah. Okay, so what is the biggest revelation you think from today's hearings? First of all, UFOs are not a matter of belief. That's a data poor perspective, and this is a data rich environment. So if you look at it this way, every day human knowledge expands, and that's what we're seeing today. Today was this landmark moment. It was a moment a lot of people were, were asking for, and representative government came forward and offered this. It's the first time in 50 years that we've had open congressional hearings on the subject of UFOs. And not only that, today there was a pressure that was put on our intelligence agencies and our Department of Defense to fess up about what they know. And what they know is that UFOs are real, that they're physical objects, that they are advanced craft, that they outpace, outmaneuver, and outperform 
any of our war technology. So they showed new footage today, actually. They showed new footage. So that is a symbol or a sign of UFO transparency. We're, we're living in a different world. We're now living in a world, your children are gonna grow up, and the UFO mystery, the scientific community is gonna look at this. Today showed that the American people want the truth and that our representative government is fighting for us. They're going to bat. So there was both open testimony, and then there was behind the scenes classified testimony. Let's put up on the screen this. Today's testimony revealed some 400 unexplained incidents, 11 of them serious enough to be categorized as near misses, where military aircraft just barely bruised past UFOs without colliding. The Pentagon has not ruled out the possibility that these incidents could be connected to extraterrestrial life. That's quite something. Right, and so you mentioned, and it's really interesting, the, the closed testimony. So because this is a national security issue, because we have machines of unknown origin with extreme capability, we've ruled out that it's our black technology, our dark secret technology, and additionally, it's ruled out to a high degree that this is any other technological nation that we know of. So that is a national security issue. If we don't know who's operating these craft, who, who made them, where are they from, and then, and then also what the intent is. So the closed door briefing, that's where the things that would be a problem for national security to speak about had to be done. However, I am highly hopeful that this is the beginning, this is the start. There will be, mark my words, there will be more open congressional briefings and they will bring in people who directly engaged these UFOs for the United States military, possibly even fired upon them. Well, we're putting it up there on the screen right now, the screen stigma has gotten in the way of good intelligence because not everyone believes. So you started off this interview saying that this isn't a matter of belief, but you certainly know that there are still the non-believers. There are skeptics out there. So how do you change that? And one of the things is why haven't more pilots come forward? So they, so that's the thing they have, like I, I could be skeptical of bacteria until I get a microscope. And here's the deal, our technology is becoming so sophisticated. It's not just somebody saying, like a pilot saying they saw it. It's tracked on ground radar, air radar, collective AI, artificial intelligence radar that connects all the pilots together it's on thermal imagery, it's on infrared, it's on normal photos. So you've got all this corroborative video evidence. And this is some of what I released with my mentor in journalism, George Knapp. We did that just about a year ago, and that's kind of what they were talking about in these hearings. And to your point, it was stated by Representative Carson, when he put this together, he's my new hero. He said, we want to reduce stigma. That's what this hearing is about. Now, why did he say that? It's because I should be obsolete. People like me, where military individuals come to me and have to leak me footage because they can't push it up through the chain of command and get it to where it needs to go. And additionally, the people where it needs to go, they also want it. Mm. So if I do my job right, I'll be out of a job because that line directly of information that should be healed, you know, that should be put back together so we can work as, as a single unit. Now, you, the other aspect of, of, the, of the hearing was what you said, secrecy, it can serve as an obstacle uh, for solving this UFO mystery. Okay, well, you've certainly done your job well because you have a lot of people who follow you. So tell uh, well, our viewers why they should follow you on Twitter and Instagram. Well, th actually, that's where I have dropped all of the new UFO footage, when I obtain it, I vet it, I make sure it's not a problem in national security, I drop it on my Instagram and my Twitter. So I would follow it because that is the way you're going to see it first. And, and it's uh, everything's at Jeremy Corbell. And the website is extraordinarybeliefs.com. Jeremy, uh, congratulations on a big day. Um, and you've Thank got you. quite the impressive safe behind you, by the way. <laughs> you know, all good secrets, they're kept under lock and key. But I do want to say, <laughs> it was it was everybody. It was UFO Twitter. It was George Knapp. It was Lou Elizondo. All these people, UFO Twitter, the masses came together and said, we want to know the truth, and that's what we've begun today. All, all right. right. Well, thank you for coming on our air and helping us make sense of all of this today. So that was... Uh...
Jeremy Corbell, he's a filmmaker. He uh, did a documentary only a couple of years ago. Um, one of the most uh, impressive UFO documentaries in history. Uh, that one was particularly particularly uh, regarding a man named Bob Lazar, who claims he worked at Area 51, specifically S4. It's which is sort of um, it's located 15 miles south of Area 51, where he was working on alien technology, reverse engineering, specifically what is referred to as Element 115. And his the statement is that. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but that uh, he was able to um, see that the technology involved um, had to do with gravity and that this particular spacecraft technology could manipulate gravity in such a way that um, it would actually fly um, utilizing gravity without being pushed you know, uh, without using sort of like our, our systems do. So anyways, um, well, I really hope he's right that we will hear more about these things. And I really hope he's right that we'll have more UFO hearings, um, congressional UFO hearings with um, government and the, the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, I'm not really satisfied with the transparency thus far, but I am happy that some former military people like Navy have came out and have pub been public about it. And there's a lot out there and there's, they're starting to come out. Former um, military, especially the Navy, have stated and they brought their evidence. Uh, the famous one was the TikTok UFO. If you haven't checked that out, go look that up on YouTube. You'll be able to see that. Um, and, you know, it's great evidence, in my opinion, having former military people come out and say, look, I was there. Here's the video. And as uh, Jeremy stated that, um, you know, the Department of Defense has all this technology to look at these uh, UAPs with different types of um, video and you know, I mean, they have infrared, they have, they just have all kinds of uh, um, different technology to analyze real time when something happens. So it's way beyond like a cell phone, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, they So they can measure the temperature of some of these flying objects. One of which they knew that the temperature of the UAP, the flying object, was colder than the surface of the ocean which is impossible. There's nothing we know of that can fly like that to be colder than the surface of the ocean. Usually it's much hotter, right? <laughs> it's, it's basically on fire. So um, that was one, one striking thing that they found out too with their, with their technology to analyze something going so fast that they couldn't keep up with it. It was almost as if it was instantaneously going from one place to another. If you did check out, hit the video that was shown with uh, the interview with, with Jeremy, if you notice that there was red, you know, maybe like a dark orange to red shape in the air, if you go back, back to see that, it's exactly what I saw in my sighting. If you did not see my video on uh, the UFO sighting with 100 children in Zimbabwe, please check out that video. I do talk about my experience as well at the end of that so please check that out i wanted to give you this video so that you are up to date and you are aware that now it's public the ufo stuff is now no longer just myth it is real we do, um our united states is now acknowledging the fact that ufos do exist um which or uaps unidentified aerial phenomenon it's not anything that any government has no other government has can claim these unidentified aerial phenomena. So that's a huge step. It's no longer just, uh, you know, folklore. It's real. So hopefully we'll have more progress in the years to come. So leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think of the UFO congressional hearing. What are your thoughts on UAP, which is pretty much the same as UFO? 
Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences? Let me know in the comment section on this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. With your support, it really helps me continue making this free content. So thank you so much for watching. Bye now.